That's nice, dude. I got around the same time, yeah, 2004-2005. That's not a bad price, dude. Plus, yeah. uh, come to think that he was a hard action figure to find. Because I remember my first Cena figure. It, it was a Survivor Series one. I got it in 2003. It still had the white cap for some reason. <laughs> yeah. And still the chain. Or yeah. maybe not the chain. I think a, a, a trash can lid or something. But he didn't have the wristbands. And this was, I believe, this was one of his, if not his first uh, John Cena action figure with the W word life yeah, word wristbands life. and, uh, you know, armband, yeah. uh, sort of a headband that's on his huge arm. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, bro. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. What is up guys, Diego Prime here back again with another video and I'm back again with another interview segment on my YouTube channel and this is an exciting one because today joining me is one half of the Philippine wrestling OGs and you may know him as the social media sinister and as you can see in his hat and you can see his banner. So without further ado guys, please welcome my guest for today. Ken Warren. Ken Warren, what's good, brother? And welcome to the show. What's up? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Diego. Uh, I appreciate you giving the time, giving me this platform to share my story this 2021 and this December. So happy holidays to everyone in advance. <laughs> yeah, so happy holidays to you, Ken, and to all the viewers out there watching this video right now. So first things first, Ken, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you're spending the time for this interview and this is actually my dream for me to have this interview with you bro so really appreciate it <laughs> uh, the hell you will start with that bro man you do it again <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right so yeah and so let's let's begin this interview Ken. so first question that i usually ask uh, to my guests to kick things off how are you how are you doing during this time of the pandemic well, first and foremost, thank you for asking me how I am. I'm doing fine, thank you. I am getting by. So as I would always say with my past interviews just recently, uh, the pandemic hit me a year later. So the start of the pandemic around March 2020, last year, mm -hmm. I wasn't really affected. I was more of inspired. I was really ignited, for lack of a better term. So is the world ending? If the world is ending, I'm not going to accept the fact that I haven't reached my body goals, which is being a professional. Well, I'm a professional wrestler, but I don't have the physique of a professional wrestler. As you can see, obviously, I still don't have it yet, but I'm working on it. It's not as easy as you think. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. And that's something that kept me busy for 2020. So mm -hmm. fast forward to 2021 this year, I, you know, him like, just like anyone else, uh, because I believe in, I believe in the saying, you choose what uh, you choose what what you let. How do I say this? You choose, or you decide what happens in your life. I'm mm -hmm. not sure if there's a saying like that, but you know. Uh, you so, for a lack of a better term, I. I guess I chose and I decided to let the pandemic get to me because it was a year later and things weren't still getting any better locally, especially specifically in the rest pro wrestling you know scene here in the Philippines and in Southeast Asia. So, you know, the, I I went to that dark place and uh, hey, I let it get to me, but eventually i'm starting to get back up you know starting to get back on the grind and i'm just keeping my uh, i'm just keeping myself really busy and productive as much as i can although it's not as seen visually online on social uh, social networking sites social media mm -hmm. but i'm working on myself i'm working you know as much as i am the quote unquote social media sinister 
I am really focusing on me this 2021. So something I should have done, which I did sort of in 2020. I'm doing it 2021. I'm a hipster like that. I don't really <laughs> go with the flow, if you will. I do go with the flow, but I like I I I always have a different approach in doing things. So it's a mouthful, but that's where I'm at right now. Thank you for asking. How about you, bro? How are you? I haven't seen you in almost two years. I'm doing great, man. You know, I'm still in college and you know, uh even though I'm still suffering with this online class, you know, still grinding, like what you said, Kanina. And yeah, that, that is really important. Uh, get through with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. All right. So um, for anything else, Ken, uh, I just want to ask you about the beginnings. Now. So Ken, when did you start being a fan of wrestling? Oh, I started being a fan of pro wrestling. I want to say three but I'm guessing it was really two years old. Mm -hmm. But in line with that, my first memory of being a pro wrestling fan is one of the two. So I'll say them both. <laughs> the first one is the tag team match uh, between the team of Shawn Michaels and Triple H against mm -hmm. the team of The Undertaker and Mankind. Oh. And on that specific match... Shawn Michaels, for some reason, hit The Undertaker with not just a steel chair, but a brown steel chair. After hitting The Undertaker right in the head, crimson mask, they got chased, chased up, chased down by The Undertaker up the ramp. You see Undertaker with a crimson, you know, crimson mask in his face. Mm. And little did I know, fast forward 2006... That was the formation of the Generation X. That was oh. one of my first memories of pro wrestling. And, that's, and as sick as this sounds, that's <laughs> what made me a fan of Shawn Michaels. Well, that and the Iron Man match. But I didn't really know it was the Iron Man match between him and Bret Hart for the WWF at the time championship. So it was one of those two match. And the other memory is just having these action figures. One of the bone-crunching action figures... Something similar to this. I don't have... I wish I had a Shawn Michaels right now. Something similar to this. I have a Razor oh. Ramon right now. Some, something like this. But I had a lot of these and doubles because it was sale in SM North Edsa <laughs> or in SM Malls um, nationwide back in 1997, 1998. So I had a lot of these. But I always credit my first action figure. I don't have it now. I do love... It's not really bone crunching because there, you know, he has a gimmick. It's a dude love, so, somewhat bone crunching action figure, which I got from Green Hill Shopping Center. Not to promote stuff, but you can, you know, sort of promote them. That's my favorite mall anyway. And yeah. there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you mentioned, of course, the tag team match with, of course, the when the time uh, Triple H, Triple H and Shawn Michaels formed the D Generation X and team of Undertaker and Mankind. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this was during the Attitude Era days. Yes, sir. I think that was specifically October 1997. I don't know the exact date, but I know mm -hmm. it's October 1997. Attitude Era, yes. Definitely. That's very interesting. And Okay, so uh, what made you realize that you want to be in the wrestling industry? Hmm. Okay, so when I was a kid, believe it or not, I, I had the typical answers. I had the answers of, what do you want to be when you grow up? Since nurseries until, I would say, until grade three, if my memory serves me correctly. I would always have the usual answers. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a businessman. I wanted to be a toy shop owner. The last part, the latter, I, I still want to do that. I want to be a businessman slash toy shop owner because I still have, you know, obviously, I, still have, I love the action figures and everything. It, what mm -hmm. keeps me alive you know for the lack of a better term but fast forward 2012 when Rey Mysterio I was in fourth year high school when Rey Mysterio had a meet and greet sponsored by Fox so I was lucky one of I was one of the lucky winners to have the meet and greet and meet him I think September of 2012 and when so I sort of prepared a promo Mm -hmm. of sorts sort of not really promo but it was more of a question uh, basically the gist of my question was 
how can I be someone like me, a Filipino, not a tall Filipino? So someone similar to his size, I'm sort of taller than him. Someone similar to his size, how can I be not not even a wrestler? How can I be an employee of the WWE? That's what I asked. Oh, I see. And I asked the question. I forgot what I exact what. I said exactly, but I remember composing the question in the showers and like days before the event. I was like, yo, this is what I'm going to ask. It's like, I'm really, I'm in the zone. This is what I'm going to say to him. And I did say it. And surprisingly, I caught his attention because uh, it was a question. It was a QA. and uh, I think at the time, the segment was, it was the first time they had the Be A Star campaign. So they were doing the Be A Star mm. campaign promotion here in the Philippines. Then I think you, we get like, Q and A. Whoever wants to ask a question to Rey Mysterio, but that's what I asked him. And of course, he said to the line, he said something to the lines of "Be respectful, don't step on anyone's toes when you're on your way up, and it's not going to be easy for guys like us, you know, because I, I know you're taller than me, you're like a six foot kid, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm five seven with the boots on, bro. So you know what I mean? <laughs> Everything is a struggle. I really have to, you know, be bigger than life. So, yeah, I'm taller than him, but I'm not. I'm no Rey Mysterio. I wish I'm a Rey Mysterio, but I'm not. Mm. And there are pros and cons with that because I can be the first me, mm. right? So he said, he said some things in the lines of that. And he even joked about, is someone recording this? Maybe I could send this to the office if the question was caught. And because I, I said something like, I would want to be an employee for the WWE. Heck, I don't care if I'm a janitor for the WWE. I just really want to work <laughs> for the company. That's my dream company. So yeah, that's 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 me putting my dream, my quote unquote secret dream at the time, mm-hmm. to the universe. And that's when I really realized, you know, it, it's it's really different when you listen to podcasts, when you watch interviews, mm-hmm. but it's different when you hear it from the person in person. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a different. It's like it's still magic, but at the same time, it sounds more feasible and possible if I'm making any sense. So from that quote unquote magic, that's what really ignited me. And I feel like, yo, this is possible. I actually got to meet Ray Mysterio. Granted, it was a sponsored event, but it still did happen. And I think just looking back right now, in, in retrospective, uh, I think I, I even pictured that when I was in high school. Like, I'm, I'll am i get to meet these wrestlers. And I've kept picturing meeting my childhood hero, Shawn Michaels. And I haven't yet. Oh. Damn, damn COVID. I was supposed to be at WrestleMania last year. Oh. <laughs> damn it, Dave. I'll make that happen. I'll make that happen <laughs> one way or another. Almost end of the year. Well, there you go. That's my another long-winded answer for you, bro. <laughs> That's all right. And I like the fighting spirit out there. And, you know, just keep grinding. You know, it's glad, it's glad I could hear your story. Oh, yeah, brother. Okay. So uh, you mentioned wrestlers like Shawn Michaels and Rey Mysterio. And I just want to ask, are they considered as your favorite wrestlers? And can you share to us who are your favorite wrestlers? Funny you should mention it. Rey Mysterio, not really. But, you know, when it comes to size... It's, he's really like the he's really our our uh, measuring stick for lack of a better term. Like if someone like Rey Mysterio can make it, I mean we're we're not a, not that far away from each other. Mm. I'm taller than him by an inch or two, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. but I'm not saying I'm a Rey Mysterio. Okay, don't get me wrong. Maybe Sparks will say like, oh, Ken Warren says he's a Rey Mysterio of Philippines. Hell no, that's not what I said. <laughs> I said like we're almost the same height, so I'm just clearing things up. Yes. Um, but yeah, Shawn Michaels is my number one favorite wrestler. Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Number two, it changes from time to time. But since he got released recently, um, <clears throat> let me say that properly. But since he got released recently, John Morrison would be my number two. Oh. Number three, damn it. Uh, fine, oh, I'll go with the Brian Kendrick. Number four. Right now, it's Ricky Starks, and I'll still give number five to Christian. Absolute Ricky Starks, I'm That's the FCW champion, and uh, number yeah. five would be Christian still. It changes from time to time, but that's still my top five. Four of those remain the same. One of them was added, so it was, it was Ricky Starks. He was a cool dude, man. 
Uh, speaking of speaking of Ricky Starks, he was guested in your PWOG live, in, if I'm not mistaken. So follow up question: no? um, uh, How was the experience uh, when you get to interview Ricky Starks? Oh, it was amazing, dude. Because I I interview. I'm really grateful. I don't know if uh, Ricky or Mr. Starks. I don't want to. I don't want to sound you know <laughs> like Mr. Starks. Um, <laughs> uh, was really nice. To me, and he, I saw, I, I thought of interviewing him from his promo at the NWA. He was at the time signed to the NWA, or well, mm. sort of. So, or I, I think he was at the end of his contract to NWA. So that's what got me to really think of Hill. Ricky Starks is something else. So, so um, it was his promo that that was in the lines of. Uh, he said something like, uh, Ricky may sound funny, but at the end of the day, I'll be taking your money. Something like that. It was that <laughs> promo of his in NWA. So he was, he was, he was, uh, he was a lack of a better term. He was the best. He was great. Cause, and he was honest. I'm not saying our other guests weren't, but like he was really in Filipino pranta. He was straight to the point. He wasn't really sugarcoating anything. That's what I appreciated about him because he trusted our small platform and P- hashtag PWOG Live mm-hmm. at the time on in Instagram last year to yeah. share his story. And what's crazy, there was a lot of hashtag technical difficulties. Myself and oh, my yeah, hashtag yeah. PWOG <laughs> tag amigo Jake DeLeon haven't really made a shirt out of that, but that was like one of those damn it technical difficulties. I think we shot that at 12 midnight here in the Philippines, but it was 12 in the afternoon in Texas for oh, Ricky Starks. Okay. Because he was living in Houston, Texas. I think he still lives there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, man, it's it was a lot. It was like four or five technical difficulties, 10 minutes in between. But you can see in his in his uh, composure, for lack of a better term, that he was, you know, he, he was understanding of the situation. And what's crazy about that interview, for those who will check out the replay on YouTube, just search hashtag PWOG live dash, oh no, not dash, Ricky Starks. The first half of that interview wasn't freaking recorded. Oh and it wasn't our God. fault. Well, partly it was. Because we weren't really ready. We weren't having, we don't have any recording because it was IG Live and IG Live mm-hmm. was fairly new at the time. We didn't have the Carl scheme, my little broski, Carl Skeet of Broski, recording the videos. And maybe we did. No, I think it was Jake DeLeon at the time who was recording. And he was helping me with the chat. And we didn't have my little brother Carl at the time. So I think that from that experience, that's when we got Carl, my little brother, to record the videos while Jake DeLeon is also recording simultaneously while watching out for questions on the chat. And it was it was a stressful, I hate using the word, but it was a stressful <laughs> time, right. but yet a fun interview with one now currently FTW champion, absolute Ricky Starks. Uh, but from, man, team I, Taz. from Team Taz, hashtag Team Taz. Yeah, <laughs> uh, damn it. I, me just remembering the interview, the first part, especially, there were a lot of information he hasn't shared in other interviews, at least at the time. So, if you were one of those people who viewed that IG live, that hashtag mm-hmm. PWOG live with Ricky Starks, you were lucky enough to really witness his explicit answers to all our questions. He was that accommodating. And I think he only gave us like 30 minutes, but he was really kind enough to, you know, just keep throwing your questions. And he was, he yeah, was awesome, man. And Mr. Starks, you see this? Man, you're, you're still the best. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's really good. Um, yeah. Um, Team Taz member, Ricky Starks. And speaking of Team Taz, there's a new member now, which is Dante Martin. <laughs> he parted ways. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Can you update me with that? What? What? Why? I mean, I'm see. I'm seeing the highlights on Instagram and everything because I haven't watched in a while. I, but there's I don't the, know. It's because Leo Rush got 
uh, he was sidelined sort of because of his grandma, right? I know that's I the think, story. I think so. But if I if I remember it correctly, there was this like on, on an episode of Dynamite. This is like a contract signing. I think uh, what there what Team Taz is trying to persuade Dante Martin to sign with Team Taz and the following I guess week or weeks um it's official that you know Dante Martin is that I would technically say sadly to join Team Taz. So it, yeah, that's it's, all crazy. it's crazy. It's crazy. Because it's not just them. I know it was also the acclaimed trying to acquire mm. Dante Martin services. Yeah. And of all the people, you would think they would acquire someone like Leo Rush. But I guess from his performance, Tony Khan mm. saw something in the man of the hour, LBO Leo, that, <laughs> ah, no, Leo can stand on his own. You know, yeah. he's, a, he's the moth for a reason. So uh, Dante Martin, I'm, I'm happy for him because he, finally he has a mouthpiece. He can mm. perform. Now he has mm. the mouthpiece with Taz. And I don't know what's happening. I feel a swerve coming yeah. at the end of this, but... <laughs> And I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to dwell on it too much. But I'm excited for him, though. He deserves it for sure. Yeah, I guess um, there's there, there's gonna be a brighter future for Dante Martin in AEW. So yeah, so uh, going back, uh, you actually showed your Razor Ramon action figure, if I'm not mistaken. And also uh, before yeah. recording this, uh, you actually showed your AJ Styles figure. So I just want to ask. Um, do you still remember the very first action figure or any wrestling merch that you have? Yes, yes, of course. So what, what I was able to mention earlier, my fair, I, I consider this because I was given a lot of action figures. Again, one of these. I had one of these. I think I had like three of these because it was still an SM. <laughs> um, I had three of these. I had like four Diesel. I had like three Shawn Michaels. I had two Bret Hart's. I had like two Undertakers with their violet gloves. <laughs> so I had a ton of these. <laughs> but what I consider mine, so I had a dude love action figure with a with a with a hand gimmick like that. Oh. And I had a Stomp in Paradise. I I know all this information from the major wrestling figure podcast of Matt Cardone and yeah. Brian Meyer. So a stomp in paradise. Wait, damn it. I'm not sorry. I correct Man. myself. It, it's it almost it's almost like a stomp in paradise, but he kind of looks like he's wearing an invasion, a DX invasion from W to WCW um clothes, clothing, because it's with the camouflage. So he was wearing an Austin 316, blood from a stone, the mm -hmm. black shirt, red graphic, just like this, almost. Mm -hmm. And it's a cool Steve Austin one. The, um, that one was given by my dad because I had like a star when I was in nursery. <laughs> when I was zooming out, when, I was, when I was a good noodle, Fair I'm reward. That's, you know, <laughs> I worked hard for that shit, bro. Oh, well, pardon my language. That's all right. Um, and uh, I had, for Christmas, I had a road dog who didn't look like road dog. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> the corn rolls was like this and I was used to mm -hmm. Roadog having the clean shaven head with the uh, corn rolls up top like carrot top yeah. almost but mine had like it was like this so like oh. that's Roadog <laughs> and yeah and speaking of Roadog just to connect it to my top five favorite wrestlers he used to be one of those <laughs> back in the oh. days and right now it's Ricky Starks he took a spot but yeah there you go <laughs> Roadog is no sleep on Road Dog. Underrated. <laughs> Underrated wrestler. Hmm. You're gonna call somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you didn't know. <laughs> All right. So that's great. So uh, before anything else, um, uh, there will be fan questions. And so our first fan question is from at I am Blackheart01. Since you've mentioned uh, Green Hills earlier today, uh, he said he can actually saw you in Green Hills one time and his question is is Green Hills considered to be your favorite mall? Yes sir, I was actually able to answer that. Thank you for your question Blackheart I haven't seen you in a while as well <laughs> hope you're doing good uh, yes, yes, since I was three, Green Hills my favorite mall specifically used to be Vera Mall when it wasn't V Mall, it was Vera yeah, Mall. I remember. Then because it's like I, I, my favorite toy store there was 
Best Toys. It was owned by this big, tall Chinese man. Well, he was tall at the time because I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the name of Mr. Billy. And he was super kind to me. He would give me discounts. And I would just be be in the stores uh, for hours. Because little uh, do people know, my mom actually uh, used to be in the showbiz industry. She wasn't an actress. She used to be a manager. Mm. And yeah, and uh, I guess this is like a exclusive information. I was first time saying this. Uh, actually, my mom used to be the first manager of Rufa May Quinto. So there you go. But at the time, it, she wasn't managing Rufo Mekinto. I think she was managing an artist by the name of Jason. I forgot his last name, but he was on his way to the top back. You know, he was, they, they were all doing the circuit, if you will, <laughs> in the showbiz <laughs> industry. They were doing mall tours. So while my mom is busy doing mall tours as managing the, the talents and everything, I'll be there at Best Toys with Mr. Billy. And I would see all these wrestling action figures. And at the time, mm. from what I know, uh, besides these action figures available on SM, Green Hills had the had other variants like a viscera. Well, I don't know that viscera, but like you know, other other variants of action figures there. So they had different. Uh, they had more options for me to choose from some variants, and I've always appreciated that. And I remember this. Uh, how would you say? Have you been to Divisoria? Yeah. So in Divisoria, to this day, correct me if I'm wrong, they still have these um, almost small corners. You in Filipino yung mga eskinita. Mm. So they had they had this because Vera Mall was like almost a Divisoria. It was like a glorified Divisoria at the time. Yeah, I know, I know. If you right back in the nineties mm. mm. and even early two thousand. So there's the jewelry shop. And when you enter, that's the best toys. And I'm like, oh man, what? all this expensive, exclusive stuff, WWF at the time, action figures. And when you go straight, it's like a, uh, a U turn. There's like a VHS tour with WWF, VHS, mm-hmm. and other, other 90s toys that you would go crazy for, that vintage collectors nowadays would go crazy for. Mm. And it was the best mall for me, specifically Vera Mall. Then I discovered years later, top floor of that. They even had more exclusive stuff, modern <laughs> stuff, yet loose. That's the time around 2003, 2002, 2004, when I appreciated loose action figures. Because not only were they ready for playing, you know, they were actually cheaper. <laughs> so you get a good price and a more exclusive figure than what you nor would normally get. So I discovered that, and that became my favorite mall. Then they they the rebranding out of nowhere. I forgot which year. I think around 2006, seven or eight, they did the V Mall. I'm like, damn it! Why did you change the name? So right now, my favorite is Shopsville, oh. um, and because they still have not all of it, because they, they did renovate it, but they had the vintage feel of what I used to like about Green Hills, and. For those who would remember, I because they also renovated this. I'm not sure if you could still enter this, uh, v- this area, this mall. If you go to Makati Cinema Square, that's how Green Hills used to look like. The, oh. the interior of Makati Cinema Square, but the it's almost like Baguio. It's like a rock, rock, oh. um, rocky walls, um, flooring. That's what I remember about Green Hills. It was rugged. Yet that's what made me love it. Mm-hmm. That could be a shirt, but like you know, what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I actually agree with you. Like Green Hills, uh, it can be considered to be one of the best malls here in the Philippines because you know, lalo na lalo na kasi yung mga uh, action figure collectors. Uh, Green Hills has the best section of action figures, including wrestling. So I remember back when I was a child. Uh, me and my father usually go to Green Hills and we actually love collecting wrestling action figures. And I remember because at the time, uh, Mattel, the brand Mattel, I think at the time was starting to produce WWE action figures back in the day. So it was very memorable for me going to Green Hills, buying WWE action figures. And yeah, I, I mean, that's very cool. 
So let me switch it up real quick. What okay. was your first action figure? Hmm. Actually, I you have still a remember? lot of action figures right here. If you the, mind. the first one though, what was the first? Uh, specifically wrestling. What was your first wrestling action figure? I'm interested. You're I'm talking actually, to a collector. You're a real <laughs> collector, bro. So you know. Uh, apologies. I'm actually um the closet for where I, oh, I mean the place where I collect action figures is just right there. So here you go. Damn! Hey, I know this one. I know this one. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. This is it. It came with the blue case, ruthless aggression. Mm -mm. Um, yellow writing. John Cena it had a chain. It had the yeah. white cap. Yeah. Ashley, I remember this stuff. Yeah. You know, I don't believe me. I'm a collector. I've been hiding this stuff and all along. Yeah. <laughs> How much you got it for? I got it like seven fifty at the time. I can't remember. It's almost like 1K or something. Hey, not bad. When, when did you get it? I think it was like 2006, I believe. 2005. Yeah, that's a nice from the, score. From, 2006. From the, like some, yeah, something like that. And from the time, you know, uh, before John Cena won the WWE Championship. If you remember, he... That's awesome. You know, yeah, if you remember the, you know... Uh, United States United States Spinner Championship that he unveiled. Yeah. Uh, that was, yeah, I remember that was the time when you know I got action figure and you know that's very memorable. Oh, then then if if that was the case, you got it two thousand and five because he yes. was uh, he was rivaled with Orlando Jordan at the time, right? Yeah, if I can remember yeah, with, with the also. That's nice, dude. I got it around the same time, yeah, 2004, 2005. That's not a bad price, dude. Yeah. Uh, come to think that he was a hard action figure to find. Because I remember my first Cena figure, it, it was a Survivor Series one. I got it in 2003. It still had the white cap for some reason. <laughs> it's still the chain. Or yeah. maybe not the chain. I think a, a, a trash can lid or something. But yeah. he didn't have the wristbands. And this mm. was, I believe, this was one of his, if not his first uh, John Cena action figure with the W word life yeah, word wristbands life. and, uh, you know, armband, yeah. uh, sort of a headband that's on his huge arm. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, bro. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, I guess uh, action figure collectors might enjoy watching this video. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. Look at that. I'm just geeking out. I don't really care. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, just sharing knowledge. Okay. So our next oh, fan yeah. question is from Audrey Bernice Chu. And she is, uh, her question is, what is the story behind the social media sinister character? Well, first and foremost, thank you for your question, Audrey. Uh, I've had different versions of this story. I'll try to make it as concise as possible because every time I am challenged, yes, that's the word, I am challenged to explain it in a very concise way without me blabbering. And as you can see, I've been failing since the start of the interview. <laughs> I've been blabbering yeah, a lot. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, well, sort of. But Social Media Sinister gimmick, it started 2014 as something I wanted to do, wanted to perform as, since our shows were every three months at a time. Because I used to be, for those who... Are not aware. I used to be with Philippine Wrestling Revolution (PWR). Right now, I'm with Setup Thailand, but mm -hmm. PWR used to be my home promotion, and uh, we we used to hold shows from 2014 to I would like to say early 2016 every three months. So I had to think of a character, specifically a bad guy character for the non-wrestling fans, for the wrestling fans, a heel character mm -hmm. that I would enjoy uh, that would be relevant to the times. At the time, social media was getting big, specifically Facebook. I think Instagram was fairly new at the time, and even Twitter, sort of. So I need, I was thinking of a character that would be fitting for the generation that's a heel persona that is almost, um, that is almost uh, carved out of at least my way of the Dolph Ziggler hashtag heel. And speaking of Dolph Ziggler, damn it, sorry, Christian, he's not 
going back full circle, I forgot to say him. Sorry. <laughs> hey, wrestlers, Tom Michaels. Tom. So, okay, Shawn Michaels, Dolph Ziggler, John Morrison, Ricky Starks, Brian Kendrick. I'm sorry, Christian. I forgot to say Ziggler. I'm a huge <laughs> Ziggler man. Hashtag over it. I'm a huge Ziggler. I could never forget Ziggler. And going back to the story, Ziggler, it was like a, the hashtag social media sinister gimmick. Hashtag is a carved out version of, or my take on the Dolph Ziggler hashtag heel persona that he used to have in the Z True Long Island, Z True Long Island story. Mm. And uh, basically, a heel persona and something that I could use to defend my home promotion. Because at the time, uh, you know, I, even to this day, when you think of pro wrestlers, the stigma, the can you help me with this one? The The idea, for lack of a better term, when you say a pro wrestler, it would be a build of Batista, a build of The Undertaker, a build of a John Cena. That's the usual... What's the term? The idea. And that's not an idea. It's, it's the... Uh, Can you help me with this, bro? It's the... Terminology or something. <laughs> yeah, terminology. It's the... Stigma. I could say I, I'll stick with stigma. It's the okay. stigma. When you see a pro wrestler, this is what you would think of. Bodybuilder mm. types. So it was obvious from the get-go. We weren't, even to this day, we're not bodybuilder types. And the local audience, the local consumers, for lack of a better term, aren't really aware of the independent professional wrestling scene or the indie scene. So... Mm. Some of them didn't realize that the wrestlers that we like, specifically the Cena, the John Cena, maybe not Batista, um, The Undertaker, came from the independent professional wrestling scene. They didn't really look the way they look. Well, well <laughs> with the exception of John Cena, uh, with the exception of John Cena, because he was bodybuilder from the get-go. So there's the independent professional wrestling scene. And it's fairly new to the Philippine audience, Philippine wrestling audience. So... I was expecting the backlash. So I thought of a heel persona that I could use that could be relevant every three months as social media would be my kayfabe platform, my creative kayfabe platform. While at the same time, when they trash our promotion, I could I am given the liberty to reply, which is basically me defending the promotion, defending the passion the art of professional wrestling because anything you start, it wouldn't really be a, 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 a home run. You know, anything you start, mm -hmm. whether in business, whether in shows and podcasts, it's not going to be a home run. So I was expecting the backlash and boy, there were a lot. But mm -hmm. I would like to fancy myself as given the liberty to reply. Well, me, well, it was when you think about it, I don't want to dissect it too much, but when you think about it, I'm defending our promotion, but I'm just doing my character work <laughs> in a more technical stuff. So that was that. But the, I guess the sinister part came from me wanting to be a reminder. I used to use the word trigger, a trigger or a reminder that. Ken Warren is the high school bully or the college bully mm -hmm. that in the hallway, pre-COVID times, when you're walking, he's not really the tallest dude. He's this filingero. He feels like he's the best looking dude in town, in school. And he would just bump you, bump you like bumpy shoulder to shoulder, not wrestling bump, just bump you. Mm -hmm. And Bill, what's your problem? Exactly. Ken Warren was the problem. And I wanted to be that reminder, that trigger. And I mix it with social media. And I mix it with the fact that we did shows every three months. It was still a long-winded answer, but that's one of the best descriptions I could give. Yeah. <laughs> that's why the word behind you became famous. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm still, you know, I'm still Hashtag. sticking with it. It's a flag that. <laughs> that. <laughs> so that's interesting, Ken. So... All right, so our next and I guess the last fan question is from 
Enzo Garcia. So, can you share to us uh, about your body transformation journey to inspire others to do the same? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that, quench, uh, for that question, Enzo. I appreciate that. Um, I was able to uh, pass through this earlier, but yeah, man, it was just a real realization at the start of the pandemic that mm -hmm. is the world ending. As funny as it may sound, that what's, that's what I was thinking because everyone, because I don't, I was making, yeah, don't get me wrong. I wasn't making light in the situation of the pandemic, but that was just me being optimistic. So on a more serious note, or as I dissect this story, everyone was not prepared for the pandemic. So mm, what, true. what do you do? You know, you can't just let things get to you, especially at the start. Because I, I looked at it like a wrestling, a wrestler's mentality: expect the unexpected. So, of course, just like in the wrestling business, the world gave us something we didn't expect. So, <laughs> and I, 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 at the time, and me, I would fancy myself still being ready for those kind of situations. I, I didn't let it get to me at the start. I didn't let the world, my circumstance, my situation at the time, my income at the time, I didn't let it stop me from achieving something I put my mind into. That's what I did. I just wanted to prove, not to others, but to myself, that I could achieve something I put my mind into. As cheesy, as corny as it may sound to others, it is possible. You just have to put your mind into it and put a lot of effort and time. Believe me when I say a lot of time into it. And if you're really serious, you're going to ask guidance. Because YouTube Academy could be the best academy right now. <laughs> but if you're not guided properly, all your efforts and time put into doing something, it's going to be wasted. You have to get professional help, whether it's for your physical and still because it's a pandemic, mental state. You know, you, it's, it's, it's okay to ask for help. It's never a bad thing to, to have training wheels, for a lack of a better term. When it comes to something, when it comes to a lifestyle that you are planning to incorporate in your day-to-day -day routine. So mm -hmm. that's what I did. A good friend of mine, um, he's not my coach anymore, but he used to be my coach because my coach now is his coach. So, <laughs> so like, I'm, I'm really gunning for the, I'm really shooting for the moon. So talk some one, not the sky. So talk some one. Because my coach now is his coach. And before... Uh, my coach was PJ Togade at mm -hmm. PJ Togade on Instagram. Check him out. This dude is a wrestling fan, a huge wrestling fan as well. And dude, he looks like a John Cena, oh. pack, an ultimate warrior all together, but Filipino size, man. Oh, so that's he's, he's an awesome dude, a really man. understanding person, and he cares. He, I would I would use this tagline that he cares. I'm not saying others don't. He really does care because if you're serious about it the the quote or the saying abs are made in the kitchen couldn't be more true when it comes to uh, changing your body for the better it's really what you eat and consistency is key that's what you need to have and queer pj as i was able to mention uh, he ingrained the, the concept of earning it to my system. I had to earn a cheap day. Mind you, not, uh, not a cheap day, sorry. I had to earn a cheap meal. Mind you, it's not for the whole day. It's a meal, not for the week, not, not for the next two weeks. It's for the whole month. Mm. One meal, I could eat what. Ever I want, but I had to measure it. But it's good for the whole month, and I had to earn that. If I, if I was training like crap, like garbage the whole month, I don't get a cheat meal. Oh, not only 
something serious like that and he he'll ingrain that concept to you if you get or if you ask his assistance via Instagram that's what I'm doing right now he also ingrained in me the concept of paying it forward I'm paying the information forward because what he did to me is something I would always treasure and value for the rest of my life because he believed in me as cheesy as this sounds he believed in me when nobody else even I would say to myself I would go as go as far as to say even myself I wasn't believing in myself but he was believing in me last year even to this day because he was kind enough to share another trade secret which is his coach which I'm under the same program now. Well, well okay. I'm trying to catch up to him, but my my equipment is just this, a home workout. Oh. So I have to really go to a proper gym if I want to speed up the process. But I had to invest in that. So another thing, good thing you asked this, um, Enzo. Uh, if you're really investing in your body, if you're investing in fitness, you have to invest in equipment. Proper equipment, so you have to ask guidance from your coach, from your coach of your choosing, for coach of your choice. It could be PJ Tugade on Instagram, at PJ Tugade. Up to you, man. No pressure, I'm just saying. <laughs> or it could be our coach, if he's going to be there. I'm not going to share my taste secret just early, as just yet. But uh, you have to really invest, put a lot of, not just time, not just effort, but really even money into it. Because... It's a serious thing. It's a lifestyle. Change mm. is a choice. Change doesn't happen over time. You know how Filipinos are always wanting to see the finished product. Well, it's not as easy as you think, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to spoil the, the party. I hate to pop the balloon. It's not as easy as you think. It's a lifestyle. And if you're someone like me who keeps falling down every now and then, I have the choice or you have the choice to get back up and pick up where you left off. It's a cycle. It's a it's a progress, and it's a choice. There you go, Enzo. Thank you for the question. And I hope you, once you decide, or which whoever's watching this, once you guys decide, you have a solid bread and butter, a solid reason why you're pursuing something god bless you if your reason i just wanted to have six pack abs hey man god bless you man or woman god bless you if that's your goal there's nothing wrong with that but there are more days that you are lazy that you are really not inspired or not motivated to, to train than days that you are so make sure when those days come and Boy, I tell you, they will come. Your bread and butter, your reason, your main purpose why you started doing this is strong enough to get you back and running. So there you go. That's great. Uh, for those who are watching this, you still so bodybuilding, Jen. Um, Ken has the word right there. So yeah, and Ken, thank you for that advice. Uh, for those who wanted to have, you no. Know, the goals if I, if I if you know what i'm saying so yeah for um blackheart audrey and enzo thank you guys for your questions so um okay, so let's talk more about you so i guess um this may be one of the best highlights in your career and that is the wwe tryout in china that is uh two years ago uh, joining you during that tryout was of course your fellow one half of the Philippine wrestling OGs, the Senorita Jake De Leon, and the Queen of Philippine wrestling, Crystal. And you, you guys represent the country during this tryout. So I just want to ask, uh, can you describe your overall experience uh, during the WWE tryout that took place in China? Of course. It was fun, but it was hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's, I keep saying this uh, in all the interviews, but it's really my, my closest experience to being a robot and at the same time a super soldier. Mm. It was intense, bro. It was intense. It's like a simulation of a video game. It's like a Sims for pro wrestlers. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's crazy, bro. I, for those who play Sims, I, I, I'm not a huge player of Sims, but 
from mm-hmm. experiencing some of the games of Sims. It's kind of like that. It's really a boot camp. My closest thing to a boot camp, it, it, it was a boot camp. When you think about it, again, mm-hmm. a super soldier and a robot. Because everything you do is on command. And I remember specifically talking about the days earlier that you're not, you're just really exhausted. Mm-hmm. You're just really at the end of the stick almost. I see the W. And this is like the third day. This is like my thousand. I'm not even exaggerating. Could be my hundreds, 900, 700, 1,000. This is my thousand push up. Let's just say a thousand. Sounds better. It's my thousand push up. And you just see the W logo right in front of you, the ring and the mm-hmm. ring skirt on the ring skirt. So, like, that, that's just, that's extra motivating. I'm literally that close, almost this close <laughs> to the WWE logo when you think about it. And, like, if that doesn't motivate you, of all the hardship that we came through, that we went through since 2014, January of 2014, to that day, July 2019, the three-day uh, WWE tryout, it was intense. And I learned that day that our body adapts. It, it could adapt to the pain. And it's up to you how you would utilize the pain and just the energy or that second gear, I don't drive, not yet. That second gear when you're not when you when you feel like everything else is about to just break down. And you have to think about it. If you get if one of you guys gets to experience it, that's their main goal to break you down. So what do you do? You don't give them what they want, <laughs> man. You show up and be up. That's what you do. That's what you do, bro. Yeah. Or lady brother, that's what you do. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, keep grinding. And, you know, who knows? We may yeah. see you in the WWE ring, WWE ring one day. <laughs> right. So, yeah. you know, just keep at it. Stick balls to the wall. You know what I'm saying? Balls yeah. to the wall. Just stick to your guns. Whatever it is that's driving you to do something, it doesn't even have to be resting. If you want to be the best marketing strategist in your company, stick to your guns. Yeah. There's a lot of competition, you know? Yeah. You want to be the best marketing strategist. If you want to be the best actor in your local theater group, yeah. stick to your guns. You're there for a reason and you stayed, you're in your position now for a reason and you work hard to be there. It's crazy when we talk about this kind of achievements. It makes you look back on all the things you went through. I don't mean to be sentimental, but like us talking about this, I remember all the days that I would I would put my Sunday, one of my only rest days in college, because I started training uh, when I was in college, mm-hmm. and be sore the next day on a Monday. Because I came from a wrestling training with a boxing ring. So I was training in a boxing ring. <laughs> I was one of those. We felt old school like that, man. Uh, AFP and BGC, that's where we used to train. Oh. Thanks to Bombay Suarez. All thanks to him and his uncle, I think, <laughs> or his dad. So, yes. Uh, it makes you look back on all the things that you went through that your body adapted to. And if you stick to your guns long enough, you wouldn't know where it would take you. That's what I'm trying to say. You yeah. know, I love motivational quotes and I read this all every now and then. Like one of the quotes would be, you wouldn't know how close you are if you gave up. Uh, if you give up. Mm-hmm. So some they don't know. It could be one more match. It could be one more event. It could be, it could be five more minutes than he, he or she would have been a made person already. So just stick to your guns. Consistency. No results, stay consistent. Good results, stay consistent. Great, ungrade, moderate results, stay consistent. I'm, I'm not saying just, just for everyone. I'm saying to myself too. Because I, when I rewatch, because I, I I rewatch my stuff, like you know, I'm vain like that. <laughs> but like, um, 
I just wanted to look. I just want to look back at something that would be useful. I want people who would invest their time, just like how you invested my time, uh, just like how you invested your time to me, and how I invested my time to you. If they watch this interview, I just want to provide the best information, the best tips I could provide from my experience. It's a different experience, but I just want people to get out something that could be useful. Doesn't have to be wrestling related, but it could be that one interview that they watch. It could be this interview that they watch and they were really close at quitting and they didn't. I don't have to know the story as long as they take care of their own story. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't mean to be a motion motivational speaker, but like, <laughs> hey man, I'm, 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 I'm big on those lately. I'm big on taking care of the energy, of your energy, of your frequency, of your vibration. I'm into those stuff lately. I don't know. It's just, you take care of those. You know, not, not everyone has supposed to, uh, not everyone is supposed to have access to that. Because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, it's you versus you, not you versus the world. So there you go. Right. So I actually almost forgot to ask you, know, what what yeah. do you think is the most challenging part during the WWE trial? Oh, dude, I can't point my finger on what specifically, but I can tell you this: my favorite thing to do during the tryout was squats and promo class. Everything mm. else was hell oh. so you can imagine now <laughs> yeah i can visualize it <laughs> so that was my favorite thing to do <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite thing to do those, those two those things to do promo okay. class and squats everything else breath breath <laughs> <laughs> like really breath <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's interesting and you know i can visualize when if there will be a time if i'm gonna pursue wrestling and if i'm going to join the wwe tryout so yeah, thanks, you know, for uh, what do you call this thing? Uh, for the heads up, you know, if uh, many, many, uh, many of you people watching this, you're going to be aware what's going to happen in WWE tryout. Special thanks to Ken Wyan right here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Um, hey, man, don't thank me. Thank <laughs> yourself for getting yourself there when you get there. <laughs> Not if, when you guys get there. Okay. All right. So, um you know, you've, of course, you've already competed here in the Philippines and all over the world. And what was your favorite match you've had? Oh, man. I've been getting asked this question recently. But still, my answer would be a tie. It's, a, it's <laughs> I don't know if it's a safe answer. It's a tie between my first match, PW Renaissance 2014, September 2014, against Chris Panzer. The Amboy, Chris Panzer, Panzer Monium at the time. Mm -hmm. And the 2018 Path of Gold tournament. Now, you would think, you would think my reasoning, it's because I won both those matches. Oh, hell no. That's so vain. That's so vain to think. That's not my reasoning. Maybe that's a part of it, but that's not the main reason. <laughs> um, the first match, my reasoning behind there, it's, it's, it's my first match. You know, all, all the insecurities, the anxieties, the fear, the excitement, the preparation of watching wrestling almost every day, if not every day. <laughs> it was there. I wasn't, man, I wish I was getting paid more to do it. But I wasn't really concerned. I hope I don't sound arrogant saying that. But I wasn't concerned. That was like my third concern. I was more concerned if I can actually deliver and represent Philippine wrestling. As we were doing, I'm sure not just me, but everyone else on that show, even Panzer. We were, we were just concerned if we could represent well from our training at the time, which was really cut short because we had to do the show. And just really try it out. That's the best experience, right? <laughs> Throw yourself in the lions and the lions then and the sharks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Best experience is just do it. Just do it. <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> That's just I that was my main concern. If I can actually deliver and represent Philippine wrestling well. And hey, I, I don't want to put an end to something, but we lasted seven years. It's not a bad run. It's not a bad run, right? Uh, now going to March 11 of 2018, because it not 
because it was my birthday when I oh, won the basketball I remember tournament. remember that. <laughs> but it was, that's why I remember it. That was, I remember it. And plus, I, I love Potato Corner. Shout out to Potato Corner. What up? Uh, <laughs> so much, uh, like, potato Corner is my favorite <laughs> fry, uh, uh, price place, the right? balance, sweet and sour. <laughs> Sour cream, sour cream, yeah. please, or maybe the corn. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> Anything, throw me a bone here. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> not because it's my birthday, not because it was sponsored by Potato Corner, not because I won. It's because yeah. prior to that, that was, I would like to say, I like to believe that was my first main event match. Not, not just me, it's not just me who was there in the tournament. It mm -hmm. was my first main event match back. From the head injury from APCC 2017 mm. Asia Pop Comic Con, so you can imagine I was really messed up in the head, yeah, as I wasn't yeah, already. But like yeah. I'm really messed up. Dude. I was really insecure because I was out for four months. I was doing managerial work for the Yolo Twins at the time, but that's about mm. it, man. Mm. I remember. And I came back uh, the January show for as a surprise PHX Open Challenge thing, and. Yeah, that Path of Gold tournament was, I kept saying in other interviews as well, like, you know this the song, Never Enough? No. The Greatest Showman? Ah. Well, you should. Wait, wait, wait. You know it? I, I can. I, All the stars on a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Partners, Sorry. Blah, 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 see, blah, blah, blah. So that's oh, it's a good school. Um. So I was listening to that song okay. over and over again leading to the show. Because I felt, that's what I felt. Not to sound too sentimental or too dramatic or too sad boy over here. That's what I felt. I was never enough to be in that position. But at the same time, it's always a breeze working with someone like Jake DeLeon. My PWOG stag, hashtag PWOG stag amigo Jake DeLeon. <laughs> so he took good care of me that night. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I thanked him a couple of times, but I guess I never thanked him enough. <laughs> no, <laughs> no pun intended, um, for taking care of me that night. So JDL, if you get to watch this, hope you do. Uh, hope you're doing well, brother. And man, thank you for that night because that's the only time I felt like I was a like I feel like I cemented myself as a main event pro wrestler, Filipino pro wrestler. That's my checkpoint of being a main event professional wrestler that match i can feel the goosebumps thinking about it written just be recalling everything that happened and just days leading into that i was really insecure i didn't feel enough i didn't i don't i didn't i feel like i didn't deserve to be there mm. be in that spot to be in that match maybe in that match but eliminated early on but um, um, that's why it's a tie between my first match and the POG 2018. There you go, that's great. Um, if I'm not mistaken, um, the 2018 Pat of Gold match was actually the very first uh Pat of Gold match I've seen in PWR, and uh, during those days was actually the very first uh, one of the first times I'm watching PWR back in the day. Uh, I was, I think. I was about to go to second year college when I'm, um, I watched Pat, the Path of Gold match. And when the time you won the Path of Gold match, and then if you remember the, uh, um, uh, Revolution X against Mike Madrigal, you won the Philippine Excellence Championship back in the day. So, yeah, that's... Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and, you know, seeing you actually uh, winning the Path of Gold... Sorry, uh, PHX Championship was actually one of the best things I've seen in PWR. And Thank you, man. Thank you. It, it wasn't just me on that on that match. So I got yeah. everyone involved there. So, yeah. but thank you. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate those those kind words, bro. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. So uh, lastly, uh, before we wrap things up, Ken, um, uh, I guess everyone, of course. Um, Many people following you, and of course, or uh, people who are dreaming to be wrestlers or you know working in the wrestling industry someday. Uh, do you have any advice for them? My advice mm -mm. for those who want to be a professional wrestler: Don't 
be you, and I challenge yourself to remain you five to ten years after. Keep grinding, keep doing what you love. And focus on your goal. Don't let anyone else say to you otherwise what you want, what you dream of, what you want to pursue. Stay consistent and make sure whenever you perform, you guys are safe. And most importantly, you guys are happy. And with that, y'all can hashtag that. Hashtag that. All right. So yeah. again, Ken, uh, before we wrap things up again, sorry. Um, do you have anything to promote? Or of course, your social media so everyone can follow you. Yes, please. Uh, first and foremost, again, thank you, Diego, for giving me this platform. December 2021, giving me a platform. Uh, share my story once again and it's Thank guys you. like you who give who inspire me to pay it forward to be the best the best version it's, I'm, I'm cheesy again. it's really <laughs> cheesy to, to to hear but it, 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 it's who am i in the pro wrestling business maybe i'm a somebody in the local pro wrestling business but who am i in the pro wrestling business in general so it's guys like you who help me showcase my story out there so thank you and thank you, best of luck to your show, to this show, man. Keep doing you. We talked about off, off air earlier. Keep doing you, man. Keep the grind. It's not always going to be, Keep grinding. but you have to be, you know, <laughs> you have to turn it up. It's not going to be always up, but you have to turn it up yourself. But yeah, yeah. there you go. Um, for those who really want to support me, please do check out and buy. Do check out and maybe really check out a merch from prowrestlingtees.com slash the Ken Warren. And this holiday season, if you want a special greeting, as long as it's in in the lines of the set of as in the set of guidelines of shout out official, <laughs> greet. I can greet your loved ones or even the ones you don't really want, as long <laughs> as you pay a certain amount via shoutout.com slash Ken Warren. Or we're also in Lazada. So what you need to do, my little broski, Carlos Kidder Broski taught me this. If, if you're going to view it on the web browser, you can simply search Ken Warren. I'm going to pop out on Lazada. If you're using the app, it's a different story. You have to search Shout Out Official. Then when you see Shout Out Official, click on that. On the search bar uh, within Shout Out Official, the page on Lazada, you search Ken Warren. I will be there and I'm ready to be school. Well, not not be square, but I'm but I'm ready to be aware and just be all the way there when you avail my services via shoutout.com. And just check out shoutout.com and slash Ken Warren once again, and I'm there. Uh, I mentioned Pro Wrestling Tees slash the Ken Warren on my T-shirt merchandise right over there. It's available there. Instagram.com slash the Ken Warren. You can see my daily stories. I'm doing cycling lately. I'm just trying to keep mm. it. It's it suggested by the coach. So I'm doing cycling. Sometimes I'm longboarding. Sometimes I'm on a scooter. Sometimes I'm working out. Some most of the time I'm blabbering <laughs> on my <laughs> IG stories. So Instagram.com slash the Ken Warren. On Twitter, although I suck at Twitter, I try to be there. I try to be a random labador there, a motivational <laughs> retweeter. Eat, sleep, post, retweet, brother. You gotta say they, you gotta keep the gimmick. <laughs> I, do there. I don't really post a lot, but I do a retweet a lot. <laughs> That's twitter.com slash the Ken Warren. Facebook, Facebook.com slash the Ken Warren. And on YouTube, I haven't posted in a while. I think my last post was three months ago. You can search Ken Warren on YouTube, or that's youtube.com slash the Ken Warren. And I would like to give a special shout out to Set Up Thailand. Check them out, Set Up Thailand Pro Wrestling on Facebook. They're mostly active there, or at Set Up underscore TH on Instagram, or maybe that was Twitter. 
I don't know. Edgy Ego is going to edit this one. Yeah, and right. then add setup TH maybe on Twitter and on Instagram. Just edit this, Diego. You know, like just, just, just mix it up. And so That's I right. apologize. I try to speak as slow as possible. So yeah, once again, at setup underscore TH, maybe Instagram or Twitter. And at setup TH on Twitter and or Instagram. You got it, Diego. You know, like just, <laughs> just cut, cut it everything. Do post editing. You got this. You don't even have to edit if you don't want. It's today. <laughs> Set up Thailand. Check them out. We are there this month and maybe until next year. Who knows? Stay tuned to find out. <laughs> and yeah, that's about it. I hope everyone enjoys the holidays. Be with your loved ones. Reach out if you don't reach out, even if you're an introvert like me. I know people don't believe that I'm an introvert because uh, I blabber a lot. Even if you're an introvert, like me, like yours truly, Ken Warren. Reach out to your friends, to your loved ones while we're still allowed in the country, you know. <laughs> so just make the most of the time. Enjoy the holidays. Happy New Year in advance. And with that being said, without further ado, y'all can hashtag that. <laughs> That's great. And so, Ken Warren, once again, thank you so much for this time. Um, Hope you're staying safe and we hope to see you soon. And yeah, keep grinding what you said. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You too, man. <laughs> so yeah, I, I actually forgot. Um, you, you can also follow me on social media, Twitter and Instagram. It's at Diego underscore prime. And also, I just want to promote uh, our podcast called Ball Game. And it's actually, you know, NBA or basketball related and kasama ko dyan, of course si Oswin King and Dominic Oka so uh, as promised future episodes coming soon so Ken Warren again thank you so much and keep grinding one more time one more time one more time real quick okay. real quick I forgot to thank you I'm in your signature intro opening although I granted I was getting superplex I would like right. to thank you for including me in your signature opening and your YouTube page. Thank you, brother. Appreciate <laughs> thank that, Thank you. Man. Appreciate <laughs> that, brother. <laughs> so, all right, guys. So, this is Diego Prime, and I'll see you guys next time. Hashtag that. <laughs>